Charlotte and this was Tired Mama Tries to Read. It is not anymore. It is Bookish Mama Blooms. Um, I've been away for a couple of months so I guess I kind of want to come on and explain to you guys why I've changed the name of the channel and if that means anything. And it's basically been a couple of months of really sort of thinking hard about what I started this channel for, which was, if you didn't follow me from the beginning, it was because I had really bad anxiety and I was going to counselling and my counsellor was like, you know, you need to, to create something for you. And I think she meant like a diary. <laughs> um, something that kind of went back to my roots of who I was, you know, maybe 10 years ago when I wasn't as bad as I am now. And I, I was already friends with Sean of for Storytime on the internet. And um, she has this book channel. So I basically just copied her and really enjoyed doing it. And at the time, I was really tired. And I'm not saying I'm not tired now, but I'm not like delusional tired the way I was when I first started my channel. So, you know, I'm not waking up in the night thinking that I've got two babies instead of one and looking for the second one in the bed sheets. <laughs> I'm not uh, hearing the dog bark whilst my son is napping and getting my phone out to text the dog to be quiet. That is how tired I was. I'm also not, and I don't know if I've ever admitted this to anybody but my husband, I'm also not so tired that when I'm reading a book and I get to the bottom of the page, I go to scroll up. <laughs> which was something that happened to me on one mortifying occasion. So I'm not that level of tired anymore. Um, Idris, my little boy, is coming up to five in January. He is pretty good now at sleeping through the night. And I never thought I'd say that even six months ago. This is definitely a school thing. And then it's also improved with lockdown, weirdly. You know, we were basically all stuck in the house for like five, six months. And during that time, we got into really weird kind of habits of going to bed very late, all of us, including Idris. But actually he ended up, I don't know, maybe it's because we were all home, but he ended up sleeping through. And it's me now who can't sleep through. It's me who wakes up multiple times in a night, um, worrying about things, thinking about things. But that is really different to being forcibly woken up when you're in the middle of a sleep cycle. It's just not the same. So I'm not as tired a mama as I was. And I'm not trying to read. When I started that channel name, I was, I think I'd read three books in two years, which is not a very, you know, big amount of books. And I, I just, I'd lost my reading patterns, my reading life. So it was an aim. It was not promising anything. It was saying that I was going to do my best. And I did do my best. And I can't remember exactly my figures, but I, they were... I think around like 80 books a year, maybe 70 on one year. So I just went from, you know, three in two years to the, you know, quite a large amount of books. And that was great. And I don't really understand how I did it. I did a lot of, I mean, I, I kind of do know how I did it. I was going to do a video on it at one point. So it was things like, I don't drive. So anywhere I go, I'm someone is driving me. I'm either on a bus or I'm in a car, you know. Anytime I was in a car, I got a book out. I also tried to swap my phone for, for a book. So I wanted Idris to see me halfway through reading a page rather than halfway through reading a post. It was just a decision I made. I've got no judgment on mothers or fathers or anybody else for that matter who is on their phone. Phones have been really important in the last year. So yeah, no judgment there. But for me, I just felt that was a really easy exchange and that worked really well. But it did mean that I was reading half a page at a time. Sometimes a sentence, it made, made books very fragmented, but I pushed through and did it. Was it always a pleasant reading experience? I don't know. Was it always relaxing, thinking to myself, I've got to finish this book, otherwise I won't have anything to vlog later? I also don't know. I don't think so. So what it came down to is that a couple of months ago, I had some really bad experience on Instagram, which was like my safe place. With YouTube, I think if you don't have your own channel, it's 
it's maybe not apparent that you get, a, you know, you get negative comments. And I've spoken to other booktubers, so I know it's not just me, which is really nice, but also really sad. And you tend to get a notification for a comment. And if it's really mean, YouTube deletes it, but it still lets you see the notification. So you get the first part of it, which in my case is, is something like this. Um, your nose is so big, I can't even concentrate on what you're saying. <laughs> That was a classic one that really made me feel good that day. I've got a big nose. Like, that's not a surprise to me, Bob Bob, who left the comment. Um, it's just really, it's difficult to describe how that one comment can make you feel, especially when you can't block that person. So YouTube, the comment section became a little bit of a place where I was worried. And I also had some interactions on other people's um, channels where I would see a negative comment and engage, which... I would thoroughly encourage all of you to do if you've got that energy. You know, leaving it to the to the YouTuber themselves is really hard. And if you happen to spot one, I really recommend diving in there and, you know, throwing your weight around a bit because it, it's so lovely when you're the person the comment is aimed at to have someone do that. So yeah, I had a few neg negative experiences with that, but Instagram was my safe space. And then I woke up one morning to a slew of comments that basically said, um, the line of attack was very, very clever. It was saying that I couldn't be a good mother if I read that much, um, and that they were mothers, and that they didn't have time to even have a cup of tea. So, you know, it's again, it's very easy when you don't have a channel, or when your personality is robust, to be able to say, well, what are those comments on all of the other comments that you get that are so great? And you're right, of course you're right. But it's very, diff you know, even I can have that talk with myself. And I did have that talk with myself. I've had it with myself several times over the last few years. Um, what happens with me, and I don't know if this happens with other people, is that even if in my mind I convince myself that it doesn't matter, uh, my body is listening to everything my mind is saying and will just, you know, react regardless. So I had a horrendous two weeks of illness after these comments that weren't, you know, my, my quivering, um, unable to breathe, um, sickness that I would normally get from a panic attack. It was far more elaborate than that. It was feeling as though I had the flu, my body ached, my, my hands, my face were going numb. I had no energy. Like when I get up in the morning, once, once I get up, I'm, you know, doing the washing, going around picking things up. Um, I often, like, go so fast that I actually wreck myself a little bit. But I had no energy for weeks. And I actually thought I was ill. I thought I had coronavirus, obviously. Um, you know, classic anxiety. I thought I was going to die. This was, you know, cancer. It just tends to be where your mind goes when you have anxiety. And it took me, a, you know, it literally took Stephen, my husband, coming up to me. And kind of holding my hand and saying, I think that this is, this is just your head. And I, I, the relief to think, actually, yeah, that probably is it. But then the sadness that it was these negative comments that had caused that. And I didn't want them to have that power. Nobody wants anybody's comments to have that power. Especially when they're so, you know, I mean... They were just so crude in the sense of crudely done. They weren't intelligently done at all. And it was going for something that was obviously not true. Like, I am the most intense mother. Um, you know, I, I, I parented my child in an attachment parenting style, which isn't for everybody. But it means that, you know, the umbilical cord is still there, you know. <laughs> and it's... I have a really strong relationship with my son. So it seems ludicrous to be upset about a complete stranger questioning that and questioning that based on my reading, you know, which is also something that is obviously a good habit to have. But that was how I reacted and I couldn't help myself because I'm a sensitive person. And I thought, well, if there's no room for a sensitive person on the internet, then maybe I just need to go away, you know? Maybe I can create things, but I'll have to do it differently. So I, I took two months off and I I haven't read really. I, I finished the book I was reading and I did read one other book over that really long period of time. Normally I would have read maybe 10 books and I read barely two. So it was refreshing. Like I'm not going to lie. I listened to music. Um, I did loads of family. I mean I do family activities anyway but we did loads of family walks and things like that. 
I kind of regressed. I, I just took loads of baths, which I do anyway, but I took more. And I, I was into running. You know, Stephen's really into running, so I did loads more running than I would normally do. We did um, run for refugees anyway, so all of September I was running. As soon as I started to feel physically better after this really bad, um, good two, three weeks of illness, I just... I just did what I wanted to do and I didn't feel the need to pick up a book and it was great. But I stopped and I was thinking, you know, do what do I want to do? And I kind of, I've always wanted to make something. I always want to create things, you know, be it a picture or, you know, writing or, you know, when I was in work, I always want to be creative. At the minute, I am... I'm not furloughed, I'm still working, um, I work in museums, if you didn't know, museums and art galleries. I still work for um, the council in that role, but my role is completely different because it's normally out there meeting people and I can't meet anyone. So I've been creating um, activities and colouring sheets and, dra and drawing stuff from scratch, which is not my job description at all like I don't need to be able to do those things but we're all utilizing our skills that we have and that happens to be one that I haven't done for a long time I'm not saying I'm particularly good at it but it's one I'm enjoying and I just thought I'm doing all that for work I really love booktube I miss it I'm gonna do it again but I'm gonna kind of reinvent myself and use this time to grow and so that's what I'm here to say really <laughs> in a very rambly way. If you've carried on listening, well done. Um, I'm going to change. I've changed in the last eight months. I don't think there's a single person out there that hasn't. I am interested in so many things that I was interested in when I was a teenager and in my early 20s. It feels like I've returned back to my roots. I love to read and I'm, I'm going to pick up my reading now again. But I want to do more than just that on this channel. So... I am a bookish mama, that makes sense, but the blooms part of the title is just about me continuing to grow, um, it sounds really hokey but I, I kind of can't describe it any, any other way. I, I want to do videos on different things, I want to do videos on the way I feed the birds in my garden, you know, what I feed them, what bird feeders I chose. I want to do book, um, vi books, did I say books last time? Videos is what I meant to say. Uh, I want to do videos on the environment. That's another thing that I'm really passionate about. And I know loads of you out there watch the David Attenborough. And I, because I've always been into eco stuff, I had a few friends message me and say, what do you use instead of toothpaste? You know, what do you, um, what kind of shampoos do you buy? And I was like, right, well, if people who know me are asking me that, maybe there's a video in that. Maybe I can say, hey, this is something I found this week and it's really changed how much plastic I use. Or, you know, my journey when it comes to food, because I've had a really sort of wobbly journey towards being what I would describe as vegan-ish, where I'm pretty much vegan, but I make mistakes. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to clearly name my videos. So if you aren't interested in anything that isn't to do with books, then you don't have to watch them. I genuinely am not worried about view counts anymore, which is really, really nice. I, I do care about the comments and the thumbs downs. I'm a sensitive person. It's not my fault that my reaction to those negative things hurts. It's the fault of the people doing these negative things for quite literally no reason. You know, there's nothing that can be gained or sort of changed from a thumbs down, because I literally have no idea why you didn't like my video. And there's nothing to be gained from somebody attacking, especially when you've never engaged with me before. So these are the things that are at fault, not my reaction to them. And I am just going to embrace that part of myself and maybe even start tagging <laughs> people when I get attacked to come in and help me, you know, and I thoroughly encourage you to tag me because it's always easier to defend somebody else than it is to defend yourself. So I want to do those videos just for me and it doesn't matter if 10 people view the how to make a flower crown video or what crystals I use or my new tarot deck, it doesn't matter. Those are the things that I want to make and if you want to view them, great. And I will still do the bookish ones. So to kind of conclude, I'll just say what I've read recently that you'll be seeing a review on soon. I've read Chanel Miller's Know My Name, which was incredible. I can't remember what other non-fiction book was at the top of my non-fiction book of the year, but this will probably... 
I, I feel at the minute that this is the book of uh, the non book of the year, uh, non fiction book of the year for me. Pro probably the book of the year. If you've got it and you haven't delved into it, do it. And even though I was going through a really hard couple of months, the positivity and the life affirming nature of her writing outweighs the trauma, which is still there. And she's really, really, you know, obviously there's a lot of trigger warnings to go with this book. But it was, you know, it's amazing. I would, it's given me a really great outlook on life and actually kind of helped me, push me towards this decision to keep creating despite, you know, obviously I'm not saying our traumas are the same, but the message in there to just keep on going is really, really good. And I have just been reading Foxfire, Wolfskin and Other Stories of Shapeshifting Women by Sharon Blackie. Um, I've read a couple of Sharon Blackies, you might have seen my reviews on them. She's an amazing writer, but she's written non-fiction up to now. So this is her fiction collection. It's her first as far as I know, but maybe there's been others. Um, I will say I'm really enjoying it. I'm a few stories in. Just a bit of a trigger warning. Um, the myths and the legends and the stories that she's based these on, that if you've ever read a proper fairy story, you know that they're quite brutal. And um, these are quite brutal. So they're sort of... Um, you know, there's bad things happening to pregnant women, let me just put it that way. So just be careful and mindful if you pick this up. Um, it's not going to be kind of... The other books were sort of more life-affirming. This is quite dark. Okay, so I think I'm just going to round it up there and just say thank you for watching. And I hope um, that... Well, actually, I'll tell you what I'm going to say. If there's anything that you do want to see video-wise, then please tell me in the comments. And if there's any experiences you've had of online bullying, which is the only thing it can be described as, please let me know in the comments. None of us are angels. We've all, you know, we've all done and said things we regret. But I think the internet is a really weird place because it's just there. And unless you delete it or block it, it doesn't go away. It's not words that can sort of drift away. And I just don't, I don't really understand what motivates people to be mean on the internet. Um, I'm kind of trying to get my head around it so that I can sympathise, but I'm finding it a bit difficult. Um, but let me know what your experiences are, because I think it's a really big issue that, that we're not talking about, and we kind of write it off as like, oh, well, you just need to focus on the positive. And I just, I can't imagine saying that to my son if he was bullied in school. You know, you need to focus on all the people who like you. Oh, the dogs are going to start barking. That's my sign that I need to wrap it up. <laughs> I hope you're all well. I've missed you all so much. So if you haven't said hello in a while, please say hello and I'd love to catch up. Okay, bye.